we know we're gonna see some incredible gymnastics. And boy, do we have a lot coming up. That is just mind boggling. Unbelievable performance. That's a superpower. That is just gorgeous. Look at the height. Welcome to the Sprouts Farmer's Market Collegiate Quad. Today, we are in snowy West Valley City, Utah, just outside of Salt Lake City at the Maverick Center. One of the most highly anticipated meets of the regular season coming up. Let's take a look at our schedule presented by Sprouts. This session here today is the biggie. Oklahoma, LSU, Utah, and UCLA, four of the top five teams in the preseason polls coming into this highly anticipated competition. Hi, buddy, I'm Bar Connor, along with my fellow Olympic medalist, Kathy Johnson-Clark. I mentioned Oklahoma is in the competition. They have basically dominated gymnastics for about the last decade. Why are they so good? Well, it first begins with recruiting to their standard. Then it's their training and meet preparation and their attention to detail, creating drills to do every day to perfect those important details and no weakness in their lineup from lead off to anchor. Let's take a look at some of their championship history stats. This coaching staff has been together for 18 seasons. They finished in the top two in each of the last 10 years won six of the last nine championships, and they're seeking a three-peat, which has only been done by Florida back the last time, was in 2013 to 15 by the University of Florida. Now, all teams here are led by some spectacular all-around athletes, Cassie. Talk about a gymnastics extravaganza. Haley Bryant's vault is a moonshot, and her consistency on all four is unmatched. Selena Harris had a sensational freshman year. She wants more. Jordan Bowers, her intense focus is unreal. And Grace McCallum, well, she has an Olympic silver medal. Miley O'Keefe from Utah is competing today, and she's already had a terrific start of the season. Let's go to Taylor Davis. That's right, Bart. She may not be competing in the all-around today, but Miley O'Keefe is picking up right where she left off as the 2023 NCAA all-around champion. Head coach Carly Doggendorf raves, of course, about the gymnastics, but more so about the leadership. Miley told her this week, hey, I've won the individual accolades. Next up is a team title at the NCAA championship. Art. Utah's last championship, and they've won nine NCAA titles, was back in 1995, so they are hungry. Everyone is ready to go here in Utah. Don't go away. We start competition when we come back. So are the gymnastics fans, because four of the top five teams in the country are competing. Here's how this quad meet works. Four teams will compete at the same time on four apparatus. Teams rotate in Olympic order, vault, bars, beam, and floor. Six gymnasts on each team. You just count the best five scores out of those six towards the team high, and of course, 10-0 is the perfect score. We're using a little bit of a different format called a double dual meet, and opening up on vault is Audrey Davis from Oklahoma, and on bars will be McKenna Smith from Utah. Here's Davis. They are gonna go off to a fantastic start here. They have incredible vaulting power. That's a one and a half twist with a 10-0 start value. She had that step back, so that'll be a slight deduction. McKenna Smith now on bars for Utah. Judges are looking for these perfectly positioned handstands right up on top of the bar. What a fantastic, <laughs> fun dismount front pike half. And they flash the U at the end of All every stuck right. landing. She's a sophomore from Albuquerque. Had an outstanding season, her freshman season, particularly on vault. Alexis Jeffrey 
leads off LSU on B. Such a critical position. The lead off athlete on balance beam of all events really has to have the trust of her teammates, supreme confidence in her work. And leading off on four for UCLA is Emma Malabuyo. Alexis so far is so confident on beam. Emma opens with a double tuck and sticks the landing. UCLA is one of the best floor performers in the country. Alexis Jeffrey on beam for LSU was formerly a Bruin, but transferred to LSU a couple of years ago and has made important contributions. Little adjustment, balance break on that front tuck, a difficult skill. She's keeping her cool. A very strong finish with a stick on the landing. Great start for LSU. That just that one balance break. BJ Doss does all of the choreography for UCLA, and it it is just art. The way she taps into the personality and the strengths of every athlete. out of that, they'll take a slight deduction for that sliding of the front foot. Oklahoma has a very senior team, but Hannah Scheibel is a freshman on ball. With a big ball, wow. and that pipe with a half twist, so well executed. Just a little hop on that landing. Watch the height, the position, nice open. She scoots back, slight deduction there, but always fun to see that vault. So Fun impressive pump. to clean, clean form in the pre-flight and throughout the ball. Oklahoma drills their vaults and their execution, their technique is superb. Audrey Davis led them off with a 9.85. Now we're going to bars. That is Alani Sabado and Annie Beard for LSU on beam at the same time. First time for Annie Beard in the lineup on beam. She warmed up last week, looked great. But it's always oh. different. In the spotlight, under that pressure, that's a fall five tenths of a point deduction right off the bat just for the fall. She missed much of last year because of an injury. Did not compete for the Tigers, a sophomore from Alexandria, Louisiana. This was LSU's rough event last week. Mm. We called that meet and uh, they made it really close because they had to count a fall on this event. They came back and beat Ohio State. Even last year, most of their events were sort of top 10-ish, but they struggled a bit on being with consistency. I love how she is regaining her composure and doing beautiful beam work after a fall. Starting now for UCLA on floors, Emily Lee Malabuyo led them off with a 9.75. Okay, good finish for any beer, but that is the score they will want to drop. Keep in mind they only count the top five and they can drop one low. Big slide on that double back in tucked position. fans might remember the fact that she was in the Olympic trials where she tore her Achilles. She has come back strong for the Bruins. Little bit of soft knees on that tumbling pass. Kat Lavasser coming after Hannah Scheibel, the freshman, got a 9-9-2-5 on ball. Lavasser can really fly. Oh, this is one of the best one and a half twists in NCAA gymnastics. It is so clean and so beautiful in the air. She often Sticks the landing, not this time, took that step. Emily's gonna close out the routine with a double pike, so it's a double back. The leg straight in that pike position, much better landing. In a meet like this, Bart, 
every fraction of a tenth of a point count. So they fight for every landing, every position in the air. Lee, the junior from Los Gatos, California, did her club training at West Valley Gymnastics. Sierra Ballard, who for many meets last year was the lead off on team, now a little later in the lineup. Sierra Ballard had a fall last week after warming up beautifully, and it was on this skill coming up right here. It's an acro series. Back handspring, layout, step out, no problem. Look how she attacked fiercely that landing. We'll hold beautiful release skill on the uneven bars. Ella Zerbis, Utah. Nice transition on that pack salto down to the low bar. As Sierra Ballad is just killing it on beam. She is so fierce, so focused. I just love the energy she brings to competition. Oh, no. So intense. Missed the landing on the dismount oh. on bars. Oh, too bad. That is a fall. Scores before that were just 2975, so not the start that they want here, especially in front of many of their home fans. And the added pressure for Sierra Ballard right here, coming after a fall, that is just another layer. She handled it masterfully. Well done. I think she's exactly the kind of athlete you want after a fall, isn't she? Absolutely, and she put so much work into the offseason to get in great condition and ready for this season. All right, Brooklyn Moores now after UCLA has a 9.75 and a 9.7. I know, Kathy, this is always one of your favorites. And this is one of Brooklyn Moore's favorite pieces of choreography. No one can dance like Brooklyn Moore. And she can tumble front double twist to a punch front. As Jordan Bowers gets set to go on ball. This is going to be a beauty on the vault. Powerful little, I thought it was going to be under rotated. She didn't quite hit her position on the table. Little crunch, little angle in the shoulder. The gymnastics people, we call that munching. You know, she kind of munched into the vault table. Oh, Morris is just something else. just oozes beauty and finesse. The nuances in the dance, in her expression. A Rudy, a little under rotated. It's unfortunate they'll have to take a little deduction because the oh, gorgeous routine. Haley Bryant now after Sierra Ballard had a 9775. Remember, Annie Beard had a fall, so LSU has already won fall. That's the score they hope to replace is that 9225, but that puts additional pressure on the remaining athletes, Bryant, Johnson, and Finnegan, who are almost always up to the task. I have never seen a gymnast embrace pressure as the privilege it is and be so consistent. Emily Morgan, normally a leadoff competitor, now on bars for Utah. Zerbies before her, just a 9-1-5, so that would be the score they hope to drop. Watch this front tuck, standing front tuck on beam. Absolutely dynamic, well done. Nice bar routine. And in all this noise, Haley Bryant is cool as she can be. A front one and a half, just oh my goodness. <laughs> Boy, us, you needed that. We'll have another women's college basketball triple header for you tomorrow afternoon. It all starts at 1 Eastern on ESPN with number 21, Florida State, hosting number 11, Virginia Tech. And Angel Reese and number seven, LSU take on Auburn. And we capped in the afternoon off with Tennessee and Texas A&M in College Station. Tune in. Oh, we're off to a great start here. We're already seeing some world-class gymnastics. And here is a look at another freshman. Now, this is Kara Wells. Jordan Bowers got the low score for the Sooners only. 
eight, nine, seven, two, five, but the other bit hasn't been great. Pay attention to the technique on this ball. Oh, yeah. So well done. She drilled it in warm-ups, really came out with the stuck landing. Look how far she lands from the table. So the judges are looking for height off the table, out of that block, and then distance. You want a nice balance between the two. And of course, yes, the landing is important. She took that step, so they'll deduct there, but the rest was nice. You talk about the 10-0 start values. That, of course, is important. We'll talk about it through the out, out the competition, but Oklahoma has 11 athletes that can do 10-0 start value vaults, which is about double what most other teams have. That's an advantage for them on the score sheet. And Bart, we often see them stick those landings. That'll come later in the season. Talk about a superstar, Kaya Johnson. Gymnastics fans might remember last year in the second meet of the season, she tore her Achilles on floor. Here, we're just exactly one year away from that, and here she is today in the all-around. She is as super as it gets in every way. So humble, so thoughtful, such a team person. Here's her acro series. Needs to line it up straight with the beam, attack the landing. Oh, wow, that was, oh my gosh, the save. That would have been a fall for most gymnasts. Graduate student from Dallas. Took that extra year as a result of her injury. Okay, unfortunately, she did not connect those leaps. She needs a series where you connect two skills it can be an acro into a dance, so she may have a start value issue. Might be a good time to remind the judges, the, the, the fans, what the judges are actually looking for. Oh, so many things. I mean, they have special requirements. On, oh, good. She just added that leap series in to not lose that special requirement, which is two tenths of a point flat deduction if you don't have it. Double twist dismount. Good recovery. Grace McCallum, the Olympian on bars, coming after Emily Morgan had a 9.825, their high score. You almost need a ticket to watch this routine. It is so high flying, nonstop, a lot of difficulty in that routine with the releases and transitions and a full twist and double oh, back. Yeah. Superb routine, a slight balance adjustment on the landing, but you can see why she's an Olympian. Selena Harris up now for UCLA on floor. Brooklyn Moore's got a 9-9 for that artistry. Huge oh, double layout. Yes. Good control on the landing. She did step forward, but showed good control as she did. Harris just had an incredible year. Last year as a freshman, just poured it out in the all-around. Seven-time All-American after her first year. Good power, chest was a little forward and she stepped forward again out of that tumbling pass. Last week in the opening meet, she scored 39.55 in the all around, which is just under a 9-9 average. What a way to start the season. And now you can see why they call it a floor party <laughs> when they're in Poly Pavilion at UCLA. They all dance together. Finnegan on beam now after Kaya Johnson only a 9-3-7-5. High flying final pass for Selena and Aaliyah is so beautiful on the balance beam. Watch her posture, her poise, and the difficulty. This triple series right here, very difficult. Back handswing to two layouts. Yes. Whew, beautifully executed. So elegant. Scored four perfect tens in her career. Two on floor, one on vault, and one on beam. The sign of a great gymnast, Bart, is one who might be slightly off, as I just saw, but she, nobody else in the arena will notice that. Her foot was slightly on the edge of the beam. You make those minor adjustments. 9.85 was the score for Grace McCallum on bars there. Anchor competitor here is the reigning NCAA all-around champion, Miley O'Keefe.
Miley does such a good job of focusing on the details. What a great finish for Aaliyah Finnegan. That ended up a terrific rotation in spite of the fall. O'Keefe competed in three events last week. No score under 9925, and she got a 10 on the beam. Watch how she flies back and forth between the bars. These release transitions earn her the bonus points. Maloney up to the high bar, then back down to the low with a pack salto. Beautiful half pirouette on the low bar. She shows off the important things the judges look for, the vertical handstands. Let's see if she'll get the stick. It's a difficult wow. one. An Arabian double front and just a small hop in place. An essential hit for Utah because remember, they're going to replace the 9-1-5 from Zerbies. This will score big. That's the view the judges get right there on the side so they can see the shapes of the skills. Little leg separation on that dismount. She has such air awareness to do that half turn and then the double front out. Very difficult, very complicated. That super slow-mo is oh, cool, that's... especially on a dismount. What control on the landing. I mean, she's dropping out of about eight, nine feet in the air and she just drills it like a dart into a dartboard. Miley O'Keefe. All right, could be a bit of a highlight here. Naya Reed coming after Selena Harris. Naya formerly at Florida now competing for UCLA transfer. Prepare yourself to be entertained. <laughs> <laughs> this is what UCLA is known for. Absolutely. She loves an audience. Double layout. Shows off her power. execution and shape of those leaps. Combination pass right here. Front layout to a Rudy, one and a half twist. Good control. Well, Barnett may be cold <laughs> outside, but it is hot <laughs> in here. She just put on a show. Yeah, Reed brought that Florida heat to Utah, formerly a gymnast at Florida, where she's an All-American, now transferred to UCLA. And what a perfect place for her to show off her expertise, which is just showtime. Let's get on to Taylor Davis. Well, guys, that UCLA floor choreography has become such a staple in collegiate gymnastics. I spoke with choreographer BJ Voss yesterday about her process, and she said it usually starts with a genuine freestyle dance party in our gym. So I can see what kind of style comes naturally to these athletes and how I can create a routine that gets you a peek inside their personality. That performance factor is a pillar of this UCLA program. She said it is their focus to not just do the moves, but to perform. The moves. There is BJ Das, her former professional dancer. Uh, she's killing it with those pants, huh, Kathy? <laughs> wow. All right, the score for Nia Reed was a 9 9, and here is Shea Campbell. Look at her average from last season almost 9 9 5. And this should be a movie trailer. Huge tumbling pass, full twisting double back, a little step forward.
way out front full. Wakanda forever! Uh, oh my goodness! Nia Reed comes with a 9-9, and here is Shea Campbell, and that was probably even better. Talk wow. about taking the stage. Her intense expression, her focus was so spot on. And what a contrast in styles from Brooklyn Moores, who got a 9-9 earlier. I love it. And so does Shea. <laughs> That's awesome. Oklahoma will have the lead after the first rotation. They scored a 49-4-5, just under a 9-9 average. Faith Torres, their anchor vaulter, the sophomore, got a 9-9 with this one. And another phenomenal vault for Oklahoma. As I said, their drills lead them to this level of superior technique. Utah's gym team has gone through a lot of adversity this offseason. We'll get you caught up and hear from them on how they're refocusing for this year after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome back to the Sprouts Farmers Market Collegiate Quad, Oklahoma, with a lead of 0.25, a quarter of a point over UCLA, Utah, and LSU trailing. Let's go down to Taylor Davis. Utah has gone through many changes in the offseason. Taylor has more. Yeah, Bart. Tom Farden, a coach at Utah since 2011 and sole head coach since 2019, left the program in November amidst allegations of verbal and emotional abuse from two prominent former Utah gymnasts. An external investigation did not find enough evidence to fire Farden, but he was placed on administrative leave for, quote, actions not related to student athlete welfare. He later reached an agreement to leave the program, saying it was time to, quote, embark on a new chapter. Associate head coach Carly Dockendorf was named as head coach. We caught up with some of the youths to hear about how they've handled the adversity. With the coaching change, I think one of the biggest things that I emphasized is that we still had all 14 athletes. We still had um, the same talent. We still had the same opportunity, and that was something we didn't lose. I think we made a great transition. I mean, Carly's done such an amazing job of keeping everything on track and keeping everybody in such a positive mindset. We just kind of leaned on each other, kept looking forward, kept taking it day by day, one step at a time, didn't force anything, and I think it's been really good for us. Carly is more than qualified to be our head coach, and we're super excited to have her. It's been a time of change and challenge, but make no mistake, the goals have not wavered. This is a team very much on fire to attain that NCAA National Championship, Bart. Thank you, Taylor. We just saw those exciting performances, including a 9-9 from Nia Reed for UCLA. They're known for their viral floor routines, and we'll talk to them when we come back. There's no team that does floor like us. We're just performing to the crowd and our teammates and winking at the judges. When you come to UCLA, you know that it's going to be a performance. Like you have to get out of your comfort zone and you have to perform. Our choreographer, BJ Dawes, is amazing. She comes from the dance world and she brought her knowledge from the dance world and her, also her knowledge from gymnastics and combined it to these amazing floor routines that we have today. When I first got here, I was so excited because I was like, man, I'm gonna have be able to have one of those amazing floor routines um, choreographed by BJ. So my routine is very, very special to me when it comes to African-American culture and just doing what I can to be able to raise awareness. And we're trying to be the best that we possibly can. UCLA calls it a floor party when they are out there. They did not disappoint today with a 49-2. Two scores of 9-9. Just about every year, one of their routines goes viral, Kathy. And I think going back to 
Caitlin Ohashi. I mean, it's just amazing how many hundreds of millions of people just can't take their eyes off of these routines. They have grown so many more new fans mm. to gymnastics. And I newsflash here, they were dancing at vault, just so you know. <laughs> That is the energy they bring to competition. Emily Lee on vault here opens up for UCLA with a Yurchenko yes. full, and you can hardly do it better than that. That is her personal perfection. And this has not been the best event for UCLA. 11th in the country, ranked last year. And we go to the bars. Buckle up for this bar rotation. They are superb on this event. Danny Seavers, the Sooners averaged over 9-9 last week in their first meet. She only did exhibition last week. Into the lineup here, and oh, oh. just that little step back. And a shout out to Lou Ball, who yeah. coaches the bars. Guess what, it's his birthday Happy today. Happy birthday, Lou. 18 years, he and KJ Kindler, Tom Haley have run that outstanding program. Sure he'd like a birthday present of a nice win here today against some of the top teams in the country. I hope you caught this mount by Emily Morgan on beam. It was so difficult. Oh my gosh, look how solid that triple series was performing. And don't look away from Sierra Ballard, LSU on floor, especially this first tumbling pass. This is as good as it gets. It is a massive double layout. Oh, and stuck it. She can perform like no other. What a bright light. Utah is so incredible on the balance beam. Every routine, so clean. Oh, nice position in those leaps on floor exercise. Oh, and a front gainer full off beam. That's an interesting dismount. Rare. Really fun to see. See a lot of back full, rarely a front full. Emily Morgan, the British national team member. Preparing for the final tumbling pass. Look for as good a landing here on the double pipe. So oh. open, perfectly <laughs> stuck. Wow. <laughs> and she stayed in bounds. If you go over that white line, it's a tenth of a point. Back to ball. A big Yurchenko for a large step on the landing and unpointed toes throughout will be the deductions there. And again, Astasi, the freshman from Andover, Mass, trained at Brescian's Gymnastics. Which is created so many great world and Olympic medalists, including Ali Raceman and Alicia Sacramoni, off to a good start. Kat Lavasser, we talked about her vaulting skill. How about bars, Kathy? Oh, she, her details on this event. Look at the toe point, the straight legs. Every ounce of her energy goes to these perfect positions. Beautiful straight arm work, even into that bare handstand down to low bar. Just impeccable form and execution right on top of the bar with that full pirouette. A nice open double tuck, but that step on the landing. Let's take a look at the tech tools brought to you by AAI, Kathy. The judges are looking for how close they get to the handstands to vertical. They have to be right at that 90 degree mark or within 10 degrees for no deduction, and she was well on top of the bar. Nice height on that release scale as well. McKenna Smith now after Emily Morgan started him off at Utah with a strong 9825. Gymnastics enthusiasts and even general sports fans might know Olivia Dunn. LSU. Second up after Ballard had a 9825. Olivia opens with a front through to a double back. This year, she's training all four events. Very difficult leap. She has beautiful flexibility. 
Olivia missed at least a dozen meets last year with an ankle issue back. Hoping to contribute to this extremely deep team where everyone came back from last year's NCAA team. Plus, they have about six new freshmen that are just superb. Kenna Smith moving smooth, very smoothly on beam. Final tumbling run on floor. High double back, really nice amplitude, and she kept that front foot down, really well done. And a stuck landing for Utah on the balance beam. And of course, every LSU floor routine ends with that tiger growl. That is tradition. Libby Dunn, with over 15 million followers on social media, has been a little bit limited on what she can contribute to this team, but looking terrific this year, Kathy. Absolutely. In the, in the off season, she made the decision, put in the hard work, wanted to do more gymnastics, and it's paying off. Caitlin Rosen now after Anastasi had a 9-8. A big wow. one and a half twist. Very solid on that landing. The distance was incredible. Faith Torres on the bars for the Sooners. Lavasser had a 9.85. Such a dynamic bar performer. And she has the details. Really has worked hard on these pointed toes, straight legs. This is the standard that I talked about for Oklahoma. Yes. Oh, oh. And found that landing out of the double layout. Here's our next Super Tuesday doubleheader. Number five, Tennessee hosts Florida in Knoxville at 7 Eastern. Then Hunter Dickinson and number three, Kansas, are in Stillwater to take on Oklahoma State. Both games are over on ESPN and the app. Jaylene Gilstrap, the senior from Texas, on beam. McKenna Smith before her, a 9.875. An unusual mount on beam, the handstand on the board. And Jaylene has such strong ballet training. You see it on both beam and floor. AJ Johnson now on floor for LSU after Olivia Dunn notched a 9.85. AJ Johnson is a gymnast who is so uniquely herself power in the tumbling and the dance. I dare to say that these women athletes are among the strongest and best athletes on any campus in the country. We are in all of what they do. And you add a touch of grace and elegance to that, they have it all. Jalen Gilstrap really fought to hold on to that back handspring back pipe, the difficult Acro series. Give, give every athlete in the country would die to have KJ Johnson's explosive power. I don't care what sport you're in. And I just love the personality of her dance. As I said, this is just so her. She loves fast cars. She used to power lift. I mean, she's just her own self, and Whoa! it's beautiful. Look at the height on that tough double back. A lot of times you're gassed at the end of the routine. You don't have the endurance, but man, she landed almost straight up and down. Yeah, her conditioning is just fabulous. She used to power lift just in her free time, Kathy. So you know when you make these skills look easy, oh, yeah. you know the work that goes behind it. And to finish the floor this strong, the conditioning that it takes, because it's almost like you've run a 400 meters and then you got to tumble. <laughs> right, sprint at the end for sure. She earns the stick crown from her teammate, Shay Campbell. Now you see her vault average last year over 9.925. This is huge. Watch the amplitude from the block and oh. the set. That was <laughs> almost picture perfect. Reagan Smith now for the Sooners on bars after Faith Torres. Got a 9.85. The Sooners yet to break 9.9 in this rotation on bars. Reagan can fly with such reckless abandon on this event. And she shows off the technique, the good handstands, and the double layout, much improved actually from last year. The technique.
Next on beam will be Aaliyah Finnegan from LSU. Let's go to Taylor Davis for more. Yeah, Bart, she certainly made a name for herself at LSU, as did her older sister, LSU great Sarah Finnegan. Assistant coach Ashley Knapp was actually teammates with Sarah and is now coaching Aaliyah. She told me yesterday their gymnastics is comparable, their mannerisms are comparable, but they couldn't be more different. Aaliyah has come into her own during her time at LSU, paving the way for this stacked team. How about the two Athletes are seeing now Aaliyah Finnegan has already qualified for next year's Olympics in Paris with her mother's home country of Philippines. She is on the floor and Grace McCallum was in the last Olympics for the U.S. team. This is how good the gymnastics is in college. Who wrote this script? Look at that double Arabian into a staff jump. And Grace McCallum opened that beam routine with a difficult triple wall and difficult acro series right there. That side aerial to lay out, step out, little balance here. I think often fans who don't see a lot of gymnastics outside of the Olympics wonder what quality are we seeing here versus the Olympics? Well, several of these athletes have done both college and the Olympics, so we're truly seeing world-class competitors. And Bart, the requirements for elite gymnastics are so different than NCAA gymnastics. Frankly, they're just way more difficult. Way more. You have to do many more skills of a higher level of difficulty. And Aaliyah actually does a high level of difficulty for NCAA. That's a two and a half twist to a punch front. Grace McCallum fought through that beam routine. It was not perfect, but she kept fighting. <laughs> And Aaliyah Finnegan is as delightful in person as she is on that floor routine. The joy is so real. I saw her at the World Championships in Belgium this year as she earned that coveted spot to compete in the Olympics. I mean, let's face it, she's going to the Olympics. We don't yet know if Simone Biles is going for the U.S. team. She hasn't qualified, but Aaliyah Finnegan has. Selena Harris on vault, this could be big. One and a half twist, if she can oh. find that lamp. Look at her, hold on to that. That's called core strength, quad strength, Man, you muscles better, in your toes. You better <laughs> check to see if she didn't put a hole in the mat. That was unreal. I can't even tell you how hard she had to squeeze to not go backwards. Well done. Audrey Davis, this could be a highlight after Reagan Smith had a 9-9. This is gorgeous bars. One of my favorite bar performers, a very difficult Higgins turn oh. into the most spectacular high Diego you will ever see. Oh. Yes, just sigh, just gasp. This oh, is glimp just... <laughs> Now watch the dismount. Oh. oh, perfection. Higgins turn again into a double front half twist. Oh. There it is, folks. My wow. goodness gracious. <laughs> That's about as good as it get. Happy birthday, Lou Ball. He's responsible for the good work for the Sooners on the bars. That I was a treat. Honestly think that's the best I, I have agree. ever seen her do. And we've seen a lot of them. Oh that is my unreal. Full of difficulty, perfect technique and execution in form. Abby Paulson on beam for Utah. She too is so lovely on this event. So solid, secure. Difficulty too, right here. Side aerial to a layout step up right to the end. Haley Bryant for LSU on the floor after Aaliyah Finnegan scored a 9.95. Now there's two judges here. 9975, two judges here. One gave a 995 and one actually gave a 10, their average for that final score. Haley Bryant is something so special. From her tumbling to her leaps, look at the amplitude, the extension. She just explodes off the floor. Bryant is truly a star. Last year competed in the all-around in every meet, went 64 for 64, hit routines. That is just flat out unreal. And they needed her leadership because they had so many struggles at LSU with injuries. Fantastic beam routine by Abby Paulson. She has scored a 10-0 on the beam before. Good finish for Haley Bryant. Finish with the Rudy. And as always, a highlight of any meet. 
she competes in. I love what Jay Clark, the head coach, says about her. He said, I'm sure glad she's on my team. She, he's going to go into mourning when she graduates. <laughs> he said he may retire. <laughs> oh, my. Well, now for UCLA, Nia Reed after a 995 for Selena Harris, sticking that ball just before. She is set up beautifully if she gets the big, beautiful ball she's capable of and the landing. Huge one and a half. Oh no, just she was out of position in the air to find that landing and then brought her head forward. I mean, literally, <laughs> she she goes a mile. It's like like a long jumper. And to try to control that landing, Jordan Bowers coming now after Audrey Davis had a 9.975 for the Sooners, their high school. I talked about the focus and aggressive attack on every event. It is like reckless abandon, but trust me, the precision is there, the consistency, the form, the polish, just Sensational and toes pointed oh. in that difficult Wilchison double back, but of course the step. All right, this is about as good as it gets on beam. National champion Miley O'Keefe coming after Abby Paulson, a well-deserved 9-9-2-5, a career high for her. Miley has scored a 10 11 times on this event. Side aerial, very difficult. <gasps> Oh my, I don't know that I've ever seen this, ever. Whoa. She just does not fall, ever. She's human. Kaya Johnson, remember a year ago, tore her Achilles on floor. And she is now for LSU after Haley Bryant had a 9-9. She packs a powerful punch, a little overdone there, so a hop back, but. So explosive. Back one and a half to a beautiful front layout. Those shapes she creates in the air, stunning. Beautiful as always on balance beam, but unfortunately a very rare fall for Miley O'Keefe. Watch these leaps. The judges look for full extension, full split in the air. LSU has three scores, 9-9 nine, nine or better, including Aaliyah Finnegan's near perfect 9-9-7-5. Nine, nine, so exciting to see her in the lineup here on floor. Finishes with a pike double back. She was supposed to compete it last week but got a cramp during the beam routine, the event before, and couldn't do it. So this is so special. Uh, her heart is smiling, I can guarantee it. That's gotta feel good. Let's take another look at that Miley O'Keefe fall on beam. Normally her precision is remarkable. So I would have told you she is a human gyroscope because this is such a difficult skill. She was slightly off center, but often she can make those corrections midair. And this one was just a little, that center was off center of the beam. So a missed opportunity there for Utah, but for the Sooners once again, spectacular on one of their record setting events, the bars. Audrey Davis, a 9.975, and well worth it. Oh, absolutely. Just stunning. I mean, immaculate form. Impressive amplitude. Everything is done to the fullest. That's called virtuosity. We remember that word from many, many years ago when risk, originality, and virtuosity was part of the scoring. All right, Taylor Davis is with LSU's Jay Clark. They had a 49-5-2-5 on floor. They sure did. Thanks, Mark. Coach, never easy to start out on beam, but an explosive rotation on floor. What did your team show you through? Well, I'm, just proud, I'm just proud of the way they came back. You know, we start on beam. It's a tough event to start on. It's early in the year. You know, Kai is still getting going again. And, and you know, you got to let freshmen be freshmen sometimes, and they got to go through those growing pains. But I was proud of the fight that they showed. Kaya showed tremendous fight on, in that beam set and then came back and kept her head where it needed to be. Did a great job closing us out on floor. I was really proud of how we did floor. 
Look forward to seeing them continue. Thanks, Coach. Thanks a lot. As good as the Oklahoma Sooners are, they're coming into the 2024 season with a slightly different strategy to use to win the championship the last two years. We'll talk about that when we get back. West of predictable. Salt Lake, west of conventional. Welcome back to snowy Utah, having a terrific weekend here at the Sprouts Farmers Market Collegiate Quad. We're in the big session of three this weekend. Four of the top five teams in the country, and of course that brings up the Oklahoma Sooners, who have dominated the last decade. And they have four all-arounders competing today, which is a little bit unusual for the Sooners. We talked to them about it earlier this week. All of us all-arounders is really amazing to have because, you know, it's not very common. So, um, and especially like past years too, you know, so having so many, it's really amazing. Just to have so many people that can do so many events and who can score really well, it's just, it's really awesome. We have so many incredible people and so many people doing new events too. So I'm really excited to see the way that people show off their talents and their gymnastics in the first place. There's so much talent on our team and it's gonna be an incredible season. So I think we go about our business just trying to be the best we can be that day. Um, every team has a different level of best and so we just have to push them to, to be their level of best. Having so many all-arounders adds so much depth to every single lineup, but it also gives you the added benefit of a gymnast having that through line through an entire competition. Keep that energy sharp and focused. Oklahoma has the lead by three tenths of a point. UCLA in third. After this message and a word from our ABC stations, the Sooners in charge. Welcome back to Utah. Amari Drayton is our Sprouts featured athlete. What an introduction to college gymnastics as a freshman last week, she Kathy. marched into the PMAC and did everything humanly possible to hold on to that landing. Look at Simone Biles tweeted out, that's our girl. They're uh, club mates. Yeah. So proud of you, If Amari. you impress Simone Biles, you got something going. Amari Drayton, two scores of 9925 in her first meet as a collegiate athlete. SEC Co-Freshman of the Week. There are the Tigers on the sideline. They are the only team in this session who has yet to win a national championship, but they have the pieces of the puzzle this year for sure. Oklahoma remains in the lead, and of course that 9975 from Audrey Davis on the bars didn't hurt. Sooners averaging just a little bit under 9-9 for all 10 counting scores so far. AJ Kindler has told us many times, if you want to win a championship meet, you got to count every score nine, nine or more, right? Absolutely, from lead off to anchor. LSU on the vault, this is KJ Johnson. Shea Campbell for UCLA on the bottom. Raise the roof for this ball. This is the one of the highest. Yurchenko falls and looks a perfect. That is, so that's a 995 start value, but that is so close to perfection. They may go for it because you can hardly do it any higher or more dynamic. And Shea Campbell on bars, swinging big into the double front. I always love Janelle McDonald's <laughs> jumps of joy at the end of every routine. Janelle McDonald, the head coach at UCLA in just her second year. Let's take a look at the pop off that table. Oh, thank you, AAI. Take, take to five feet above the table, tight body, tight form, all the way through to spotting the landing and perfect control. Thanks to our tech tools presented by AAI, we can get a real glimpse of just how high she is in the air and she still drills the landing. Audrey Davis now in that critical leadoff spot for the Sooners that have the lead in the team competition and McKenna Smith will lead off for Utah on the floor. And as solid as Audrey Davis is on being, she is as exquisite in her presentation from the tips of her toes to her fingers. She is picture perfect. Beautiful flexibility, gorgeous posture, original choreography. Beautiful. 
the high toe. Difficult ring jump there. awareness in the air to find that landing out of the double twist off beam. Audrey Davis, the senior from Frisco, Texas. She's having a meet. Last year, I remember, Bart, you and I talked about her technique on her twisting so good on the floor exercise. Very well trained in this front twisting. Look at the oh, clean yeah. form, nice tight body. It's 47 for 47 last year and on a roll here. Here's Amari Drayton, our athlete of the week. A one and a half twist, steps out of it this week, but it was still big in terms of, the, especially the distance from the table. Put on to Taylor Davis, there was an injury in the warm up. Yes, this UCLA bars lineup had to change right before the meet as Sarah Ulias unfortunately went down with a knee injury during warm ups. This would have been her first competitive lineup back in two years, having dealt with different injuries. She is back out on the floor. Her mom, Larney, also made the trip and is by her side supporting her team. And I can't tell you how heartbreaking that is because she worked so hard, hadn't competed in those two years. and is finally back in the lineup on bars. Uh, Malabuyo, that's a 9-9 leadoff score for Jay Campbell. Good fight on trying to keep that landing under control. Hira Wells earned a coveted spot on the Oklahoma Sooners beam lineup after Audrey Davis scored a 9-8-7-5. Talk about the depth of this team and how they compete for their spots. There's about 20 athletes on the team, and yet only six get picked to make the competitive lineup. Before I do that, I have to tell you that that aerial cartwheel was special. She switched her legs in the air. It's called a switch leg side aerial, very difficult. But their standard of performance and, and competitive performance is just outstanding. On floor for Utah, Abby Paulson, a 9-9 for McKenna Smith in the leadoff spot. So we are really seeing big scores here today for this world-class gymnastics. Abby Paulson opens with a front through to a two and a half twist, a big bound forward. So a deduction on that landing. One and a half twist, dismount off the beam. Good solid routine. to a front ball. The judges look for the precise footwork going into those leaps, so no flat, no flat feet. Back one and a half to front layout. Leah Finnegan after that highlight on floor, now at the ball, Kathy. This is an interesting ball. Watch, she twists onto the table, front pike off. So she did the regular round off like every other vaulter has been doing all evening onto the board. And then instead of going backwards onto the table, she half twists onto the table and then goes forward with the front pike. We have seen her score a 10 on this vault. Nose lines right there show the judges exactly how straight in line the vaulters stay. Caitlin Rosen on bars now for UCLA. Maloney up to the high bar. Janelle McDonald is a superb bars coach. Oh, she is the head coach. This is her event. She does an excellent job of training and preparing and double oh, yes. leg separation Janelle. in the middle of that skill. It's hard to take your eyes off of Janelle. She is so enthusiastic and doing a terrific job in just her second year 
as the head coach of that storied program, Jordan Bowers. Look at her average last year on beat, 995. That's unreal. The growth from her freshman year has been astounding. She figured this event out and is able to channel the nerves into excitement and focus, energy to the positive. I love her story. She was an elite gymnast and then kind of got disillusioned on elite gymnastics, but she stuck around so she could thrive in college, and boy, she's doing that. She is a star in collegiate gymnastics. I mentioned elite, that's the athletes that are training for the world and Olympic teams, national teams. I often remind people that there are five million athletes in gymnastics in the United States. Only five will make the Olympics, but we have about a thousand in college. Beautiful extension on those leaps on balance beam. And just enjoy Jalen Gilstrap's artistry on this event. Double twist. Oh, what a landing. That was a great beam routine. That was over split. When you can go beyond the split in the air, it's so wonderful. Savannah Shane here, formerly at the University of Florida, now a transfer to LSU. Here she is on the ball. She came up short last week. She wants to improve. Just does the full here today. I think it was supposed to be a one and a half, and I believe she might have just gotten a little lost in the air. We'll have another women's college basketball triple header for you tomorrow afternoon. It all starts at 1 Eastern on ESPN with number 120, 21 Florida State hosting number 11 Virginia Tech. And Angel Reese and the number seven LSU Tigers take on the Auburn Tigers. We'll cap off the afternoon with Tennessee and Texas A&M in College Station. Emily Lee now for UCLA on bars. They already have two scores of 9-9 from Campbell and Rosen. Oh, a little. She took that Pat Salto too far out and was almost on top of that low bar, so really has to work hard to get her swing back. Torres on beam for the Sooners after Jordan Bowers got their high score there, 995. Beautiful combination. Look at the confidence on that side aerial layout step up. Very difficult. She was one of those athletes that was sort of under the radar in terms of recruiting, and she has just been a star in just her sophomore year for the Sooners. Reliable, explosive, and yet clean at the same time. Now, they recruited raw power. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was an, I don't even want to say unpolished gem because her technique and execution is so good, but now she shines with more confidence and presentation. AJ Kindler happy with her beam team so far. They have four solid hit routines. Sooners in charge here in the third of four rotations. Jaden Rucker, you see here floor average from last year. She's coming after Jaleen Gilstrap at a 9A5. So Utah scores are very respectable. You don't want to miss this vault right here. Kaya Johnson doing a double twist. Very difficult vault, the most difficult in the competition. She landed right on that line, so she was slightly off center and a little short of rotation, but showing great difficulty. Love to see it. Jaden Rucker is a, is a national champion on the vault, and she brings that power here onto the floor. Win that title it back in 2022. Your senior out of Mesa, Arizona. Have to front layout. Beam for the 
Sooners. Kat Lavasser after Faith Torres scored a 9-9-2-5. Sooners solid over there. They have four great scores from four hit routines. And like her teammate Audrey Bowers, Kat Lavasser is just so exquisitely polished on this event. The details are superb. But she hadn't good. always made the beam lineup because there was a little bit of inconsistency. And like I said, this is one of the toughest beam lineups to make in the country, isn't it? Once you figure out how to lock your brain into the focus that's needed, the calm, aggressive approach to this event. Selena Harris on bars for UCLA after Emily Lee had a 9-6-7-5. Their lowest score over there. on being happy to the front area and a good combination on the floor on bars very difficult full pirouette into that double layout yeah often you see that full pirouette into a tuck double back it's tricky oh. to crank a double layout out of that good job for selena harris back to lavasha and this is great work on the bounce look at the lift oh, on that yes. gainer full it floated that's going above and beyond. That's called air time. That's hang time to the <laughs> basketball fan. She was hanging until she drilled that landing. Grace McCallum coming after Jaden Rucker's 9-8-5. The McCallum, the Olympian. Lee Bryant, this could be a highlight on ball. <laughs> and we have launch. <laughs> That is such a fun ball, front pike half. That is her signature skill. And it never gets old. Unless she was in fourth place. And they have solid scores on ball, which will help their efforts today. The Sooners still have the lead. This is an Olympian who has so enjoyed the college experience, having teammates, sisters, really. Suffered a knee injury after five meets last year and has come back beautifully in all the events. The love and support between these athletes is so important. Because they make the difficult look so effortless, and we know it is not. <laughs> it is so much effort. Reagan Smith herself, who had a superb elite career, now hard to believe that she's a graduate student at OU. Her final year, 995 was her average last year. She tends to be clutch here. Oh, she is a beamer and a gamer. Explain what a beamer means to those who don't normally see when this. When someone is just natural on this event and just in Oh! That's a rare fall. The Eight. Sooners already have five hit routines. Oh, and a little mistake over there on the uneven bar. She covered it well. Zeta Frazier after Serena Harris had a 9 9 2 5. This is when you see the grit and grace of these amazing athletes when they make a mistake to be able to get back up and finish strong or to work through the issue as Marzetta Frazier did on the uneven bars. No, you are right. Uh, a Beamer is just somebody who embraces this pressure, just loves it and thrives under it. What I'm reminding of right now is how early in the season it is. This feels like a championship meet. That's three months away, folks, so these little mistakes should not be unanticipated. It's how you respond to them, go back to the gym, and come back strong the next week. Despite the fall, OU, through the first two weeks of the season, has the two best team scores in the NCAA, because they had five really great hits, including 9-9-5 from Jordan Bowers in that rotation. Here is Miley O'Keefe, you might remember in the last rotation, had an unfortunate fall from the beam. O 
opens with a beautifully oh. oh no i was gonna point out the pointed toes and unfortunately she was short of rotation I mean, she really regained her composure after that first tumbling pass because you know she is not happy about it. And I'm sure it didn't feel good on those ankles when you land short and you have to keep pointing your toes, smiling, perform. And unfortunately, it's not easy to do after a misstep like that. All right, let's go down to Taylor Davis. She's with UCLA's head coach. Thank you, Bart. McDonald. Coach, a disappointing injury warming up on this event before the meet. Your lineup comes out and puts up a 49-2-5. What did this rotation tell you about your team? You know how resilient they are. We talk about that a lot in the gym. And, you know, we really tried to come out here and do it for her. And, you know, we, we showed up for our family and we, we filled in holes where we needed to when those kinds of things happen. And, you know, we really talked about that every time we get out to be out here together, it's an opportunity. And so to really embrace the opportunity and just enjoy it. They certainly embraced it. Thanks for the time, Coach. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Go Bruins. <laughs> <laughs> Go Bruins. But right now, the Sooners have the lead. Now, last year, it was well documented that the Tigers lost several athletes due to injury. With a mostly healthy roster this year and some newcomers, they're looking good. We'll discuss that after the break. Welcome back to the Sprouts Farmers Market Collegiate Duel. Quad meet the Oklahoma Sooners have a lead by a little more than half a point. UCLA, after that, bars rotation has surged into second, and LSU currently at the bottom of the four. And boy, Kathy, you and I documented the rough year they had. They're trying to rebound from the injuries of the past season. You know, normally, gymnasts look at obstacles and, and hardships as opportunity to just get better and dig down deep, but it was too much on this LSU team, and yet they managed to keep going all through this season and ended up fourth at nationals. And what that created is a battle-tested resilience in this team that is at the core. It's very part of their DNA now. Now they've got the depths, so they are hoping to really build. We spoke to them earlier. Expectation is tricky if you let it, you know, I, I um, but our process is what it is. And so when we come into a meet like this, we're, we're very much treating it as just another step in our process. We know we have all the talent in the world, and so we just want to showcase that to everybody. Um, week in, week out, stick to our process, and to just continue to get better each week and be where we want to be um, come April. I definitely think winning a national championship is this team's goal. It's definitely in the back of our mind. We do think about it every single day, but we try not to think about it because it's January and we don't really want to, like Jay always says, we're not going out to win a national championship tomorrow. So just doing what we do every single day in the gym, taking it one meet at a time, one, just one day at a time and seeing how we get it. So many world-class athletes here in college competition. Look at six of them who have either made or are trying out for the upcoming Olympics in Paris. Chenge Boksai from Hungary, Luisa Blanco, Colombia, Aliyah Finnegan, as I mentioned, from Philippines. They've already qualified. All right, we'll come back for the fourth and final rotation here in Utah after this message and a word from our ABC station. Oh, 
welcome back to the final rotation at the Sprouts Farmers Market Collegiate Quad. We have a great competition going on today with four of the finest teams in the country. The Oklahoma Sooners have the lead. UCLA is second, Utah in third, and LSU trails the Sooners by a little bit less than a point. Here we go with LSU on the bar. This is Alexis Jeffrey. LSU needs to attack this event, and they can start off so strong with Alexis Jeffries. She has become a consistent leadoff. Demi Winger for Utah will be their leadoff vaulter. Beautiful lines. Now watch this dismount way up above the bar. Oh, that is huge. That floats. Do some double ball. Cameron Winger opens with a stick. <laughs> oh, they needed yeah. that. Yes, they did. That is a shot in the arm for this Utah team. Utah currently in third of these four teams. Not known for their powerful vaulting, but that's a heck of a landing, isn't it? Absolutely. She was so patient to wait for that landing and that stick. <laughs> Okay, here is Audrey Davis for the Sooners, having an outstanding competition today. And Emily Lee for the Bruins. Opens with a front double twist on floor. Oh, a shaky front aerial on the balance beam for Emily Lee, and she needs this connection, so she's gonna repeat it. Boy, ice water in your veins to do that. That is a required combination she had to repeat to get credit for it. You see the score coming in from Cami Winger from Utah. Got a 9.95. Lovely position in those leaps. Beautiful elevation on the leaps on the balance beam as well as the tumbling on the floor exercise. Just beautiful dancer going up on that high toe, showing the shapes that she created in her leaps in every position. Davis is the leader in the all around, although this competition is mostly about team competition. They do award an all around champion. She's currently in number one spot, Ella Zerbe. Let's see if she can recover here on the vault. A big moment for the freshman here, and it's a big vault. The important one, one and a half twist. Nice tight form. Oh, oh good she landing. almost got a perfectly stuck landing. She had to adjust the one foot, though. Lori Tatum on bars after Alexis Jeffrey led off the Tigers with an outstanding 9 9 for that stuck landing. A very powerful swinger on bars. Loses a little bit of form in the routine, but just so strong. Oh, and yeah. that dialed in landing. Great job, her first time in this lineup this season on bars. She played an important role last year because so many injuries at LSU, she had to step up to keep that team together and did her part. Caitlin Rosen on the beam now for UCLA. UCLA currently in second place, just about a half a point behind the Sooners coming into this rotation. As her leap series. Switch lead to split jump. Beautiful full split in the air. Saraya Hawthorne up now for the Sooners. Saraya, a transfer from Georgia. Wasn't expected to be in the lineup. She was an alternate. But Danae Fletcher had a lower leg injury yesterday in training. So Saraya gets the call. And she's certainly up to it. And I dare you not to smile through this floor routine. So fun, playful, and huge tumbling. Look at that open high double back. Oh, what a 
strong addition to this beam lineup for UCLA, Caitlin Rosen. and the Buccaneers at 8 Eastern on ABC, ESPN, and ESPN+. Plus. Our megacast coverage includes also Peyton and Eli on ESPN2 and our ESPN Deportes Spanish language version as well. Coverage begins with the Monday Night Countdown crew at 6 Eastern on ESPN. Kaya Johnson on bars after Tory Tatum at a 9.85. on beam for the Bruins at the same time after Caitlin Rosen had a solid 9-8 ball. Watch this to Samoa on bars, double layout, sky high, and a great landing. Nice comeback from last week. She had some problems on the uneven ball, so that one's going to make her happy. Beautiful footwork here on balance beam. Gainer layout, step out. She goes right into a back handspring swing down. Reagan Smith on floor for the Sooners. Saraya Hawthorne with her part 9 8 2 5 after Audrey Davis led them off with a 9 9. And a double twist dismount. <laughs> Strong finish. Clean form and execution on this tumbling. Grace McCallum on ball for Utah. Kuchenko full. Nice and clean <laughs> and finds the landing. Wow, remember she's coming back after a knee injury last year. And she planted that landing. Wow. That is the first time she has vaulted in competition since that injury. Final tumbling pass here on four for Reagan Smith. Pike double back. That was a great performance, really so full of energy, great form. Sooners in the lead and pouring it on on floor. And what about Grace McCallum? Look at the control. And the smile. <laughs> How fun. Callum, of course, a world and Olympic medalist. And so great to see her thriving in college as well. Selena Harris. On beam, Emma Andrews had a 9-9 over there. So the Bruins, who were in second place coming into this rotation, doing well. Here is Connor McLean. You Big expectations for her. You don't want to miss this routine. High flying, excellent technique. Very difficult first release move she did on the high ball. And look at that triple series over there on beam. You got to split your eyeballs here to see greatness. <laughs> and it's a focusing double back. What 
A landing, what a bar routine. She stuck it, but Jay Clark just kept bouncing up and down. He's happy for his freshman, Connor McLean, one of the highly recruited freshmen who chose LSU and already off to a great start. And it won't be long before we see her in the all around. She is spectacular on all four events. Look at how relaxed and confident. She is so competitive. It just drives oh, her wow. to fight to the finish. You know, it would have been so easy to take a step, but she wasn't going to do it, was Not she? on your life. <laughs> Kat Lavasser coming after Reagan Smith. Got the second 9-9 for the Sooners in this four rotation. Twisting double back on floor exercise. Look and at the celebration. <laughs> oh, yeah, look at that for LSU. They were looking for a bright spot today, and they got it. Freshman Connor McLean, the first 10 of her collegiate career, and this is just her second meet. I think we'll see even more. on the choreography of these routines. She helps them pick the music and the right style for each particular athlete. And there's a lot of diversity there, isn't there? Very rich choreography. Very well placed to the music. Emma Bal Malabuyo on balance beam opens with a wolf turn. Lena Harris before her at a 9.95. UCLA in second place coming to this final rotation. Sooner this still in charge. Is such an opportunity for UCLA. They were a little messy on beam in their opening meet. Savannah Shane here on bars for LSU. Many people used to seeing her in blue and orange for Florida. Now a transfer. Watch this oh. skill. It is a spectacular straddle Jaeger, the best in NCAA. Beautiful form, legs just glued together, straight, toes oh pointed to perfection. Showing it off here, double front, hat twist, <laughs> there it is, well done. And she's coming after Connor McLean's perfect 10. Malabuyo does her part for the Bruins. What a final rotation. And guess what? We're going back over to Vault. And here is Faith Torres on floor for the Sooners. Kat Lavasser hitting 9875. And Vault will be the former national champion, Jaden Rucker, after McKenna Smith got a 9925. Two powerful gymnasts going side by side. And one and a half is oh, underdone this week. Oh. That's too bad. And Faith Torres can light it up on floor exercise with her tumbling. Sooners, as I said, coming into this last rotation are in control. If Faith Torres gets a 9.65 or better, they will win this meet regardless of their anchor competitor, Jordan Bowers, who comes next. Brooklyn Moore's on beam for UCLA. Brooklyn is beautiful on this event. She has a very unique pass coming up right here. It's a front tumbling series on beam. Front aerial right to a front handspring to two feet. Very oh. difficult and unfortunately off the beam. She was so perfect in warm ups. It was right there. 
Oh, wow. look at the height on that double back. There's just no way to get fast twitch muscle fibers if you're not born no, with them. They and don't sell it in a store. <laughs> <laughs> Faith Torres, boy, what pop off the floor. Explosive power for a very balanced all-around gymnast. What, what I'm really admiring here is how they have brought out the, the shine in her performance on floor exercise. When she first started college gymnastics, she wasn't comfortable with that part of it. No more. Front tuck with a full for Brooklyn Moores. Normally just exquisitely beautiful on this event. Still beautiful, but have the fall. That will likely be the score they drop. As we go to bars, Bryant 9975 here or better would win the all around today. The Teflon coated, star studded beast here. <laughs> She is impeccable, uncanny with her consistency. So smooth, so effortless. Watch this dismount, sky high, double front oh, half twist, yeah. and perfection on the landing. That's what Jay Clark was hoping for, a little momentum. They got off to a rough start on the beam, but they got into rhythm here. Haley Bryant, what can you say about this amazing athlete? I need to make up a word. There has to be a better word for her. Just extraordinary talent, so much heart, because she is just a beautiful human being, too. And I guess she's one of the best athletes on the campus at LSU, and I'm including all sports, because she's strong and flexible and agile and world-class as a gymnast. Jordan Bowers now will anchor it for the Sooners. Faith Torres had a 9-9-2-5. The Sooners have this wrapped up, but they can add to it if they could replace the score of Soraya Hawthorne's 9-8-2-5 with Jordan Bowers' score here. This is such a complete performance. She feels the music and watch the amplitude and technical precision on this first tumbling pass. It is beautifully executed. Oh. Front double twist. Wow. She cuffed that. It was slightly off on the timing and yet pulled out a perfect front tuck out of it. That first, first pass had an E element in it. That's the highest rating of difficulty in the tumbling. Beautiful, effortless pike double back. You see that additional four inch mat on the floor. The athletes who are allowed to use that mat to protect the ankles as long as they put the white stripes on there to identify the out of bounds area. When I talked about their attention to detail, it's like on those leaps to show the perfect shape in the air, full split, elevation, and all the finishing touches with the straight legs and pointed toes. Oklahoma on pace to give a shot for the three-peat at the national championship. Impressive throughout today. So Bart, you and I both kind of gasped a little. It's not that it was necessarily a mistake. She was just yeah. slightly off her timing, was a little flat-footed on that punch, and yet her athleticism. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. To I'm come not up sure with I could have pulled that around. That takes a gift. Jordan Bowers. Tom Haley, part of that outstanding coaching staff that has been together for 18 years, created all those national championships for the Sooners. Oklahoma has won this thing with a 197.9, just under a 9.9 average in just their second meet of the season. LSU came from fourth up the final score at the Sprouts Farmers Market Collegiate Quad. The Oklahoma Sooners led wire to wire just under 198, a 99 average. That 199, 199.79 is the best score in the NCAA this year. Dale Davis is with 
Audrey Davis, <laughs> who is the all around champ. Yes, and we're not related, that we know of, but Audrey, four of the best teams in the country competed in this meet today, and you guys come away with the win. What kind of momentum can you guys take after this meet? I mean, competing against these teams was an incredible experience, just being able to have all the energy in here. So just keeping that ball rolling and going in the gym and doing the same thing that we've been doing every single day. An element of this program that you guys strive for is consistency. And at this level of the sport, that's a challenge. How have you guys tapped into that to put it on the floor so early in season? We always just relax. We tell each other to relax and have fun because that's the most important part about gymnastics. And the more that we relax, the more that we have fun. So just take a deep breath and then go. <laughs> well, hey, we had fun watching it. So congratulations on the win. Go enjoy it. Thank you so much. The Sooners like to come out hot every year, notch a couple of big scores, and Audrey Davis did her part, the leader in the all-around, averaging over nine nine. She is the epitome of the all-around gymnast, the combination of power, technique, polished form, exquisite presentation, uncanny cat-like air awareness. I mean, she is a magician and such a pleasure and beauty to watch on the floor. So many world-class all-arounders today in this competition. Audrey Davis gets the title. Here's the schedule for tonight on the ACC Network. We'll see exciting California, Michigan State, BYU, and NC State in the third and final session of the Sprouts Farmer Market Collegiate Quad. That's at 9 Eastern on the ACC and Network. This event will be back next year, January 10-11. It's going to be in Oklahoma, the site to be determined within the state of Oklahoma. But Oklahoma and Utah are confirmed participants. More schools will be announced later, depending on how the year goes. The goal is to have four of the finest teams on the floor at the same time at the beginning of the season to kick off another exciting year of NCAA gymnastics. And the most valuable performer from Utah is Kelly Wiener. The most valuable performer from LSU. Selena Harris will get the all-around title with a 39.65. For UCLA, that's averaging over a 9.9. Look at her scores there. Only one score below 9-9, and the sophomore on a roll for the Bruins. Now let's hear it for all of our MVPs. All right, we'll be back with some final thoughts about our meet today. When we come back to snowy Utah, we had a good one. Sprouts Farmer's Market Collegiate Quad is brought to you by Sprouts Farmer's Market. Find your healthy. And Tax Act. Tax Act guarantees your max refund. Let's get your taxes over with at taxact.com. Here's our next Tuesday double header. Number five, Tennessee hosts Florida in Knoxville at 7 Eastern. Then Hunter Dickinson and number three, Kansas, are in Stillwater to take on Oklahoma State. Both games are over on ESPN and the app. Final score here today in Utah at the Sprouts Farmers Market Collegiate Quad. The Sooners remain undefeated on track for another shot at a national championship. It could be a three-peat for them. And LSU, fourth after the first rotation, climbed back up to second. And on the strength of that deep team, including young freshman Connor McLean, just her second meet, but her first perfect 10 of her career. She is so fearless on this event. Look at how tightly she kept those knees together, toes pointed throughout a very complex and difficult dismount. First class. And what a moment she'll never forget. 49-6-5 on bars for LSU in that rotation. The best in the NCAA this year. Taylor Davis is with Connor now. Thank you, Bart. We love a perfect 10, but especially the first career perfect 10. Connor, how would you describe what that routine felt like in seeing that 10 flash? 
Oh my gosh, 13 was unreal. I've actually never hit a routine like that. I never stick my dismount ever. So once I stuck my dismount, I've never seen Jay so excited and he was so proud of me. And then the team was just right there and had my back. And I honestly think they're more excited than me. So I guess I got excited after that. It was just so crazy. Definitely quite the celebration down here. I know you have high hopes for yourself and how you're going to continue to contribute to this team. What kind of support have you received from your teammates? This support from my teammates are on it's honestly unreal. Like they have my back no matter what. And especially after that routine, like I have never seen them so excited and I'm not the type of person to get excited, especially in the gym at all. So I don't know, it's just so fun and so ha so fun to have them um, just right there by me. Big things ahead for you, I'm sure of it. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations on her first perfect 10, Connor McLean, the young freshman at LSU. Well, we have a lot of gymnastics coming up on the ESPN family of networks. Look at this, Kathy, 34 regular season meets, live coverage of the ACC, Big 12, and SEC championship. That'll be on March 23rd. Full coverage of the NCAA tournament. National championship will be on April 20th on ABC. Final thoughts quickly, Kathy. Well, Oklahoma answered or backed up the answer I gave you. Why are they so dominant? And it is exactly what you saw they presented today. Oklahoma wins over LSU, UCLA, and Utah. Coming up next is ABC World News Tonight or your local news over most of these stations. For Kathy Johnson-Clark, Taylor Davis, I'm Bart Connor. Thanks so much for walking. So long from West Valley City, Utah. The Sprouts Farmers Market Collegiate Quad, Session 2, in the books.